In this example, we are given 3.5 grams of glucose, 800 grams of water, an initial temperature of 22 degrees Celsius, a final temperature of 33 degrees Celsius, the heat capacity of our bomb is 840 joules per Celsius, and our specific heat capacity for water is 4.18 joules per Celsius times ground. We want to find the final change in energy of our uh, surroundings when one mole of glucose is combusted. So, let's visualize the example. So here's our bomb calorimeter, and we're basically taking the red oxygen molecules and the purple glucose molecules, we're mixing them, combusting them in our bomb or steel bomb, and we want to find the amount of energy released that goes into heating the bomb, and then the amount of energy, or the amount of energy released that goes into heating the water. So, we have to find two things. Energy that goes into the bomb, and the energy that goes into the water. Okay. First, let's look at the equation at hand. So, we have one mole of glucose and six mole of oxygen combusting into six moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water. Okay? So, our second step, in our second step, we want to find the change in energy that goes from the system, from these two guys, from our glucose and oxygen, into our bomb. Okay? Now remember, our bomb is given a heat capacity of 840 joules per Celsius. So we simply use the formula for heat capacity, or Q equals C times change in T, and we present this Q as Q1. And we find that 840 joules per Celsius times the change in our temperature, or 11 degrees Celsius, gives us 9,240 joules. So this many joules goes from the system into the bomb, into heating the bomb. Now let's calculate that there, uh, the change in energy that goes from the system to our water, okay? And we're given a specific heat of water, 4.18 joules per Celsius times ground. So we have to use this formula, okay? Because we're using little c. So we let this change in energy be Q2, and we basically plug in our mass for water, 800 grams, times 4.18 joules per uh, gram times Celsius, times our difference in temperature, so 11 degrees Celsius, and we get 36,784 joules. So this main joules goes into heating the water, in changing temperature of water by 11 degrees. Okay? The final step uh, is basically to add up the two energies, because energy in both cases is released, you must add them up. So 9,240 plus 36,784 joules gives you 46,024 joules. But there's one last thing left to do. Notice that this amount of joules corresponds to 3.5 grams of glucose. And this amount is much less than one mole of glucose. Okay? So let's see how many moles 3.5 grams of glucose actually corresponds to. So we take our grams. 3.5 grams, divide that by our molecular formula for glucose, which is 180 grams per mole, and we get 0 0.019 moles. So this number corresponds to only 0 0.019 of moles. We want to find how many, uh, how many joules co corresponds to one mole of glucose. Okay, so we basically take our number and divide that by our moles. Okay, and that gives us 2,422,316 joules per mole. So this number is the amount per mole of glucose. So that's how much energy is released. And because it's released, this means it's negative. So it's negative, this number.